Okay. So the brachiocephalic trunk, the first one, it blanches to give uh, the, the two, the right uh, common carotid and the right subclavian. But the subclavian has got a lot of branches. They just begin. They just start br branching there. You've got this one, the first one, which is called right internal thoracic artery. It branches going down there. You're able to see it. It's going down there. That's the uh, right internal thoracic artery. So if you have the right, meaning that you also have the left uh, internal thoracic artery. So it branches somewhere there on the left subclavian there. From there, the second branch of the left subclavian of the subclavian then is the vertebrae artery. So it is going on top there. It is called right vertebrae. This one goes direct into the brain. It supplies the brain and comes back. It, it, it contributes to what we call the sake of virus, which we don't want to, to talk about right now. Three, there is the next branch there, which is branching down. It is called the right thyrocervical trunk. So thyrocervical trunk is also a branch of the subclavian then. I just want to be able to have a picture that this subclavian uh, artery branches, it has branches as, it's, as it is moving there. So you need to know like, at least 10 branches and how they are branching and where they are branching from. Because that diagram that is there on Telegram has all this. I don't know if I can show you the diagram, right? Let me just see if I can try to share that. Just a minute. Let me try to share that. Okay, okay, okay. Why is telegram? Hmm? Telegram is not there. Just a minute, see, just a minute. Telegram. Well, oh, I didn't open telegram. Telegram, okay. okay so, so um, as we are waiting for Telegram to open on my PC, uh, let's proceed. So I'm saying this uh, uh, artery branches, they branch as they are moving that side. So you've got the first one, which we said is the right vertebrae. I uh, know the internal thoracic artery and we have the right and the left internal thoracic arteries. And then you have got this subclavian going that side. When it reaches this side, as it is, uh, um, how can I say, proceeding or exceeding the uh, clavicle ear, it becomes what you call the axillary artery. It becomes the axillary artery. And then from there, it is going, as it is going that side, it is branching. So you need to know at least all those branches that are there. And that, that, that is why I want to show you that question so that you see what I'm talking about. Where is that question? Where is it? Okay, okay, okay. Tim. Okay, still downloading, huh? Okay, so that's it there on the diagram. Please know this diagram. I'm going to uh, to show you the question at the, at the end. For this one, we've done it. Huh? So I don't know if you've, you have ever seen this thing before, but if you've never seen it, you can see it tomorrow in the paper. So this is coming from the heart. It's coming from the heart. So if they say heart in the diastole, meaning that the heart is relaxing, the heart is relaxing, that is the diastole view. From the base with the artery removed. So they have removed the atrium or the atrium, the right water and the left water have been removed, the atrium. So you've just remained with that base. Okay, so this is what you see on top there. So you have got what you call this side of the pulmonary valve. From the pulmonary valve, you have got what you call aortic valve. From the aortic valve, you have got what you call the mitral valve and the Bicusp tricuspid valve. Mitral has got two, two cuspids, so it is called bicuspid or mitral. And how do you remember that? You've seen the cuspids. You've seen this one. You've seen this one, which is this side, this last one. That is one. You've got two this side. So I've got two cuspids, and that is called mitral or bicuspid. This side, you have, you have got how many cuspids? You have got three. One, two, attaching there, three that side. So you have got one, two, three cuspids, and this is called the tricuspid. In case you find it, because I saw it somewhere in the exam, label it. So you have got this one, which has got three. You can just count them. One, two, one, two, three. So this one is called a tricuspid. This side, it has two, one, two. This one is called the mitral or bicuspid. Okay, from there, this one, how, how can you remember these two? So you have got the pulmonary valve, which is there on the, how can I say this, anterior. 
there is a pulmonary valve. And then you have got aortic valve, which is more medial or central. And then you see this artery, which is there, it's called the right coronary artery. So you guys have seen this thing before. I've seen these things before in the exam. So they can just bring this one, they tag it, and then they tell you to label it. You have these notes. I've just tried to summarize for you what is important. So you need to know at least those th uh, four things that I've talked about. The coronary artery, which is the right one, don't forget. And then even the corners at trusses, the covering that, that you need to at least know it. If you can't know everything better, you know at least maybe 10 of these things that are, uh, you are able to see because the diagram, the diagrams will come in, will come in the black color. It won't be in that scene, in this color that you are seeing there. Okay. So that is the thing. <laughs> this is the all summarized one, but I, I don't know, like we can't see it properly. This, but this is how they bring it. So you have got the permanent valve, which, is, which I said is anterior. Centrally, you have got the aortic valve. And then you have got what we call the, the mitral, this side, which has got two, and then the tricuspid valve. This is how it comes. The boy. So the muscles, of, the muscles of the hand, there is a question I sent you on Telegram, which has got the hand like that. So you need to know the all muscles at least. You, you need to know to, to label the muscles, these, these muscles that you are, have, you are seeing there. You have got what you call extensor retinaculum. You know the extensor retinaculum. It is called extensor because it is on top there. It extends. There is an extent. Yeah, there is a, the, there are muscles that extend the the arm. So now, since they extend, we call them extensor retinaculum. But if they flex, you are on the opposite side, inside the palm there. There is what you call flexor retinaculum. It is more like a hood. Anyway, I don't know, but you need to know these muscles at least of that. So you've seen the muscles. So now the muscles, because there's a diagram there. Let me just see if uh, this thing is done downloading. <laughs> ah, doc, doc. Okay, so uh, I'm still downloading uh, because I sent those things through uh, WhatsApp on my phone. So I can't really see what the things are unless I, I download them on my PC. So I'm still downloading. So you need to know those muscles. You've got what you call the dorsal interossi muscles because there's a question. This one, label it. So you've got abductor digit minimum. Abductor digit meaning meaning that it abducts the digits so it's called abductor digit meaning because it is very small then you have got the flexor digit meaning so you need to know all these muscles in case they ask you those who've done these things in the gr they have they expect you to know these and you've got the all notes these notes i'm going to send you again in the group so to go through them this is the thing that i wanted you to people to know so i said the inside of what to call the flexor the tinaculum. The other side you are the extended because the extended because that side you extend. Opponency policies, meaning that this muscle goes to the opponents, which is the the the, 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 the thumb. It's called it is called the opposite. Do you remember the opposition thing? So it's called open opponents. So opponents policies, that is the muscle that goes there. Abduct the policies brevis, meaning that it abducts and then it goes to the thumb and then brevis, meaning that it is small. So you need to know at least these things. So you know that you have the lumbricoid, which are between the, these one, two, three, four. There are four lumbricoids. Just in case they, they, they bring it. So we've seen it. This one, okay, same thing. So now the mediastinum, we talked about this yesterday. Before we, start, we just started, I, I told people to open this on page number 12. I told them that this thing summarizes everything about the mediastinum. So mediastinum, you have got the sternal angle, which is between the T4 and the T5 of the thoracic vertebrae. When you draw that line, it, you draw it from there, and boom, that line comes this side. Everything that will be on top, 
are in what we call the superior mediastinum. Everything that is below are in the inferior mediastinum, which is divided into the anterior, middle, and posterior. So now the homework is you people to go and understand the anterior uh, mediastinum, what, what is in the anterior mediastinum, what is in the middle mediastinum, and what is in the posterior mediastinum. Okay. And that is what we're supposed to know there. So now know that when you cut the, the, the ascending iota and the descending iota, they are more like they are more like on the superior mediastinum. These branches are all in the superior mediastinum. Everything is on top there in the superior mediastinum. Even the sternum, it is divided, but it is not in the mediastinum. Because we said we said this mediastinum is between the two lungs. That is where it is. So that's it. that's it there. Go through that uh, page 12. I know you can't go through the questions. I mean, the MCQs and understand them. I mean, the, the notes, like you have a lot of notes that you people have to go through, but you can't manage because of time. Okay. This one is also awesome. They're saying, uh, on the mediastinal surface of the right lung, which is here, you find these structures, a zygous vein. What is a zygous vein? I can't see it there. Okay, this is most. Ah, you've not done that. Okay. This one is very important. If at all they will bring more than 100 MCQs or maybe 80. This one is very important. You need to know that the pectoralis major is, is, is a, a good example of what you call the convergent muscle. Secular muscle, we said this is called the obicularis oris. Obicularis oris, well, the one that is in the eye is called obicularis ocli. So all those muscles are secular muscles. So you need to know that the fibers are secular. This is naming the muscles in according to the fiber fiber arrangement. So the, 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 the deltoid, deltoid muscle is a mouth pennant. Why is it called the mouth pennant? Because of the fibers, the way they have been arranged. You've seen the way they are arranged, they are originating. Sometimes they'll just say the following muscles, which, okay, they'll say like, uh, the deltoid muscle is arranged in, uh, in which category? How can you classify the, the deltoid muscle? So you say it's a mouth pennant. Wow, the pectoralis major is a convergent because the fibers converge. The fusiform form meaning like they are more like they start and then they form a bulging at the mid. That is called the fusiform. form. Parallel, we've got what you call the gracilis. So gracilis here, it starts from there, moves, move, no, sartorius, sorry. This is sartorius mass. So sartorius is parallel because it is parallel to the board. That is the sartorius. And then you have got what you call the quadrin, uh, quadricep mass. This quadricep, yeah, quadricep, this one which is here. You've got the bicep, but this is called quadricep. This one is called the bipanet. Remember, there's a difference between the mouth pennant and the bipanet. Okay, don't forget that. So the good example of the bipanet is the quadricep. And then this muscle, which is this side, I don't know if it is the tibialis or what, but it's called unipanet. So that's a good example again of the classification of muscles in according to that uh, level. And I wonder how these people can give you the MCQs while you've entered those things. I don't agree to that. I don't agree. Anyway, so this is what I was trying to say the other time when we just started. You have got this art. You have got this art. So this art has got what you call the left atrium and the right atrium, which is this side. So the, the right atrium has got the vena cava. In the vena cava, you have got the superior vena cava and the imperial vena cava. So the inferior vena cava is here. The superior vena cava is there, just in case they bring the art. From the right atrium, you have, you have got what you call, because the thing is that uh, uh, the, the, the blood, the blood is pumped uh, on the left art side of the heart. So this is the left side. So when they pump the blood, the blood is supposed to go to the upper part of the body. And that means that the blood is supposed to be transported by the arteries, because you know, the, the arteries are supposed to take the blood away from the, from the heart and take that blood to it, towards the body tissues. While the veins, they carry the, the, the deoxidated blood, most of them, they carry the oxygenated blood from the other parts of the body and take them back to the lungs so that they grab oxygen. When they grab oxygen, the pulmonary arteries 
wa uh, the pamal veins will carry them the blood again bring that uh, blood to the heart i don't know if i'm right but the thing is that what happens is that when the when the, when the blood when the blood reaches the, the left atrium the left atrium will pump that blood to the other parts of the body from there the the, the blood which has oxygen it will be your, the oxygen will be it will be utilized by the other tissues and then they produce carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will be carried by the veins and bring that back that the blood to the the heart through the vena cava through the vena cava when the blood reaches the vena cava there it will start okay let me start let me demonstrate it this means that i'm just talking to myself let me demonstrate so when the when the blood reaches in here when the blood reaches in here it is called the oxygenated blood meaning that it comes from the lung from the lungs direct by the pulmonary veins boom the pulmonary veins drains there when they drain there the blood is oxygenated and then that oxygenated blood is supposed to move and go to the other parts of the body so it moves boom 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 there's there's a there's a, an iota there boom iota boom 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 boom, boom, boom. and then descend ascends so this this one is called ascending iota this one is called aortic arch this one is called this uh descending iota because it is coming down and then there you have got branches of course this one which is directly from there which is called the black and cathartic trunk you have got the left uh, uh common carotid you have got the left common i mean left subcave and then going this side and then um that's it so in, in short you need to know all these blood vessels because this this diagram can also come like that and you'll be shocked that you find the same the same red diagram and you don't know anything so uh you need to go through that structure this one is the mediastinum mediastinum just in case you did the skull <laughs> So this one we've done it. Latissimus dorsi, the origin of Latissimus dorsi. We need to know the origin and also the nerve to Latissimus dorsi, which is the lacodosa nerve. So in the end of lacodosa nerve, what will happen is that you're going to have uh, difficulties in the the majorities that the Latissimus dorsi does. So these are lymph nodes. You have got what you call the apical lymph nodes this side, and then you've got what you call the, the these name these you name them in according to the structure. So the axillary, so the the apical meaning that on the apex there inside there you've got what you call the brachial axillary lymph nodes because they are on the brachial artery somewhere there. You've got what you call suprascapular axillary lymph nodes because they are on the suprascapular veins that which are there. You've got pectoral axillary lymph nodes which are on the pec major. Take mine like we discussed the other day, yesterday. So those things you need to go th through them, guidance. And this one, you need to know it. And then most importantly, wait, 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 what is this thing? Well, this one come up this one. So joints, don't forget that the joint that is between the humerus and the hip is called the bone socket joint because the bone comes from the humerus. Well, the socket is the hip itself. So that is called the bone socket joint, say it's another joint. And it moves in all three directions. That, that's, what, that's what we said. And then if you talk about this joint that is on, we said it's condylar joint and we said this between the radius and the couple bones. Don't forget that. The wrist joint is formed by the radius and the couple bones. So it is not formed by the hyena, please. Don't forget that. While the hinge joint is the joint that is formed by the humerus and the hyena this side. And this is called the hinge. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce this. Madame Shan has been laughing at me every day when I mention, when I talk about the hinge joint. So I don't know how to say it. So you have got again the joint which is between the couple bones because you have got the couple bones which are the lunettes, I met what, what, those couple of bones. They have the, they have this joint with, um, okay, they have this joint with uh, the metacarpals because you have got four metacarpals, which is, which, okay, you have got four metacarpals which are situated in here. Oh my God. 
So they are A. I can't annotate them. I think we know them. So we have you have meta metacarpals A. So between those metacarpals and the carpal bones, you have got this a specific saddle jo set joint, which is called saddle joint. Between the trapezium, which is one of the um one of the oasis of the um, couple bones and the first metacarp. So that is called the saddle joint. And remember, we said the pisiform is also one of the sesamoid bones. Don't forget that. We said we've got the patella and the uh, pisiform as our good, our two good examples of the sesamoid bone. From there, we have um this one, uh, which is our last joint of our the plane joint, which is between the tessels, tessel bones. These are the bones that you, you are able to see. Where are they? These ones. These ones are called tessel bones. These ones, tessel or tassel bones. So between those two, 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 two between the two of uh, the tassels, you have what you call a uh, gliding joint. Gliding joint or plane joint. And then you said there is what you call C1 and C2. You remember we said there is what you call C1, which is called the, the atlas, while C2 is the axis. So between C1 and C2, we said these ones, this, this joint is called the pivotal joint or pivot joint. While uh, the joint between the, the C1, which is the atlas, and the occipital, we said it is called the ox, at, uh, occipital or atrand occipital joint, but I have forgotten the specific type of joint there because you need to know it. So when you said the arthrosis, is, we mean that the joint is not is movable; it moves. That is the diaphysis. Gliding. We've talked about that pivot, ellipsoid. Ellipsoid is the joint which is between what and that. I think you need to do it. Says, this one I don't know. I forgot. It. But we've talked about the hinge and what gliding. So flat surface of the two bones glide across each other, like the carpals and the metatarsals. So 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 the joint between the carpals themselves, for example, the runet and the amet, is called gliding. Okay, and also the joint between the tassels and the tassels themselves is called gliding. One and the same. Don't forget that. That is the, that is the heart and the stair in the diagram there, the cuspid valve, light bunch of what? This is the heart. That one is not supposed to be yours. This one is not supposed to be yours. Types of bones, very important. You have flat bones, you have long bones, you have short bones, irregular bones, sesamoid bones. And you need to know the examples, suture bones. So the, one of the flat bones is uh, the sternum, but you also have the ribs. Ribs are, are also flat bones. Long bones, you have got the femur, humerus, and other long bones like the ulna and the radius, tibia, fibula, they are all long bones. Irregular bones, their structure is irregular. So you have got it. Feta blade, for example, and also other bones that are irregular in shape. Sesamoid bones. Sesamoid bones, these are bones like the patella and the pisiform. And remember, we said the scaphoid of the uh, couple bones is the one that is most susceptible to fractures. That's what we said the other time. Cuneiforms, these are short bones. Even the couple bones themselves they are short. Short bones, flat bones, sesamoid, irregular. So in meaning that we revise the whole um, couple bones. Lodeta calf muscles, the mnemonic still stands, it's the same one, sits. Sits is our mnemonic. And we said the S is for supraspinatus, I infraspinatus, T teres minor, S is suprascapular, suprascapularis mass. So the, the exception is it. They, sometimes they will, they will put the rest major, but it's minor in this case. And then the other S is for suprascapular, not subscapularis, because people can make some. So it's for subscapularis and not suprascapular. Uh, Sorry for that mistake. So it's supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Don't you uh, don't forget that. Subscapularis, teres minor, not major, infraspinatus, and this supraspinatus. So six is the mnemonic for that. And you're able to see them there. So this is what we talked about. Uh, 
and our time has finished, so we can just log out and then log in. Is that immediate as okay, good. Time is done. 